Hi, everyone. I am Dr. Diane Hayden, and you are listening to The Dr. Diane Show. Stay with us for the next half hour, where we will explore revolutionary expansion of mind, body, and soul. Each time on The Dr. Diane Show, I have experts from around the country discussing cutting-edge topics on longevity medicine, natural health, mindset, and soul purpose to help you shift your perspective and become a mindset warrior like me. I'm happy to be joined today by Lee Hartman of Lee for Life Health. She's in Naples, Florida. After serious cancer and losing friends to cancer, Lee is compelled by and even obsessed with health. She chooses to focus on the positive and embrace health as her challenge. Teaching her body to eat its own fat by lowering insulin was a goal, as metabolic health is critical for cancer and most all disease. As a life coach, Lee loves helping clients obtain the mindset to retrain their brains for success. So welcome, Lee. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So I usually like to start out by just having you tell our listeners a little bit more about how you, your journey, essentially. I mean, we heard a little bit in your bio, but you know, if you want to talk about kind of how you've gone down this road to being a health coach and focusing on metabolic health and people will be very curious about what that is. We're going to get a lot into a lot of interesting, fascinating stuff that you've learned over the years for sure but kind of just give us a little bit of background of about how you got interested in all this. Well, you know, when you have cancer, you get a team of doctors, a whole bunch, and they, not one of them could help me decide why I got cancer and why I was so serious and why my friends died. So I've spent the decade since really getting into metabolic therapy because I knew there had to be something here that made normally healthy young people sick. And there is, turns out. And there's been lots of stuff lately. However, a lot of it is kind of adulterated depending on the uh, pharma and the lobbies that are involved. So you do have to like figure it out. And I test on myself. And if I feel better, fine. If I don't, ooh, that really doesn't work. So there's a lot of stuff that I can help people with now at this stage because I have improved my blood work, liver enzymes, all that that was wacko after high dose chemo. So it, it does work. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of myths to be busted as well, right? Like we're going to talk about the whole, you know, low fat thing and oh, cholesterol and <laughs> we could go on and on and on. But I know okay. you're you're very passionate about educating people on why they need to eat healthy fats, you know, and not just any kind of fat, but healthy fats. And I'm sure the first question you always get asked is like, oh, but isn't that going to cause heart disease or high cholesterol? (laughs) It's crazy, but if it does, it'll be a lot slower than the low fat, (laughs) high carb diets. That's what really causes. And for many years, like, and the first two clients I had as a health coach were doctors and they recommended that. And I told them, this is your fault. You guys said this for years and years. That was the only way to stay healthy. And it's so wrong. There's very little nutrition in that. And they're running down the good nutrition, which is the healthy fat. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those girls who says, sit there and eat a stick of butter. I think that's overkill. I'm a balanced, like 33% fat, 33% protein, 33 carbs, you know, and just keep it even like that. But just make sure that you do get healthy fat with each meal because that tames down the insulin that you're going to react with the meal. So it does depend on your body type and what you want. Like if you're getting, if you feel good, and you're not on 33% fat, that's probably okay. But at first, at least, when you teach your body to burn fat, you need that much. So yeah. I would say overdo it at first to make sure. It's, it's so important for our hormones and everything. And that's what runs our body. It's not the math. It's not calories in and out from the math. It's totally our hormones. So we have to take care of them. It's everything, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, pregnenolone, cortisol, insulin, everything. So Which is it, even more important as people age, for sure. Yeah, exactly. that's kind of like the, miss, the missing factor. Like you need those hormones to make cortisol, to make you know cholesterol. And there's this whole thing about, well, why are people's cholesterol so high? It's because 
their hormones are lowering and their body is trying to make more cholesterol to make more hormones, not the bad kind of, you know, cholesterol that, that Actually, they say. And that's, that's <laughs> just a boat. LDL is just a boat. It's yep. carrying that cholesterol because exactly. cholesterol is a repair healing. Yes. As well. So you, and that's what they've done studies that women with higher cholesterol live longer. Guys, not so much. They're kind of flatline. They don't live longer, but they don't die sooner either. But women live longer with higher cholesterol. I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. So I'm sure people are thinking, well, what does she mean by healthy fats? Because you and I know what that means, but a lot of people are still <laughs> confused. Like, what am I supposed to eat? So what do you recommend for people? What do you, what do you eat as far as healthy fats? Well, the, the very best thing is beef tallow, grass-fed beef tallow. And I was not really, that doesn't even sound good to me, and it didn't, but I first started doing research on this right before the quarantine because a paper came out by the Journal of Cardiac Colleges, J-A-C-C. It was 19, or I mean 2019 and 2020, it, it was getting out there a lot. And these guys all said, that beef, lamb, or pork fat does not cause cardiovascular disease, and it actually prevents stroke. So I thought, oh, and they talked about stearic acid. So I started doing research on stearic acid. Turns out that is a fat burner, plus it has choline. We all need a lot of choline, and we don't get it from food like we should. So healthy fat, like that's my top choice. What I did was I made lamb leg roast every week for myself, and I would cut off the fat that I didn't eat and then I rendered it myself. And I started frying my eggs in that and using it to brown burgers and put it in anything that needed fat. And I felt like a million bucks. It was like amazing. And I, turns yeah. out it's got A, D, K, and uh, E in it. So yep, it's like, of course, yeah, all the fat filled. soluble vitamins that we need. Yeah. <laughs> filled with vitamins plus the fact that you're full. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask you too. If I gave you a plate full of pork chops or lamb chops, whatever you prefer, just like overflowing, maybe a dozen, how many could you eat? Oh, you're not going to eat that many because you're right. Because you're going to, because the fat's going to satiate you, you know, like a couple, three, probably yeah. depending on the size of them. Yeah. And you're full. You're full. Right. Okay. Switch that with a bag of Oreos. <laughs> you're never full. <laughs> and you can go for ice cream after the whole bag so that's the difference and our body has a sensor that responds to fat it knows it likes that and it says oh okay we're full so that sensor doesn't work with carbs right no it's, that's true that's true and the brain needs it too i mean but oh, how many people are going to be rendering their own fat so what well, would you have to you can okay, i was going to say yeah, I just did that because it was quarantine and, you know, you weren't. You out. had time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, okay, another thing I can do, because you have to like six hours at 220, which you can leave it because you're not going to start a fire or anything. But, you know, we were home anyway. And it, it's just, it's easy to do. And I thought, okay. And then I learned so I, I could buy it then. And I do now. Big buckets. But it has a good flavor. I even put my salmon sockeye salmon and saute it in that because Do you have a particular brand that you like well i buy um there's one at whole foods i think it's uh, oh god it's, it's like a primal one of those oh like primal it's... kitchen or yeah okay yeah, yeah. And then, if you don't uh, remember that's fine i just know that people always ask me and they're like well what brand because you know it's even hard that's... to find but yeah. you can find it on amazon okay which also saved me during the quarantine. I thought, wow, I don't have to go to care ever assisted living because they bring in the food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the food. So yeah, I usually get it off Amazon now because it it's like tripled in price. And at Whole Foods, it's like up there, it's $20 for a little tiny bottle. So uh, But you don't need a lot. I mean, oh no. You know, and yeah. like even, but even an egg only has five grams of fat and a butter has, I think it's got seven or eight for a teaspoon. So to get 33 grams, you do have to like plan a little bit to make sure you're going to get it up. Cause some girls will just have one egg right. for breakfast. So, you know, you, 
you're slacking on the fat then. So what about people who think that they're gonna gain weight if they eat too much fat? It takes fat to burn fat. And it's proven that saturated fat does not cause weight gain. What causes the weight gain is carbs interacting with your insulin. And that totally, it's much more harmful to your body. And we'll get into that when we get into the PUFAs too, because your body can tell right off, you know, that it's not nutritious. And it, right. it, it tries to, you know, bypass it, but it can't. Yep. yep. It's already there. <laughs> Yeah. And I like what you're saying though, because you're not saying cut out carbs completely. You have no. a very balanced approach. And for some people who might be more avid exercisers, they may need a little bit more carbohydrate, but it's yeah. this whole, you're trying to get people to understand and get away from this whole idea uh, that's been beat into our heads of like, you know, low fat, low fat, low fat. Well, when you go low fat, the only, the, the only way you can, you know, what are you going to eat? So what's going to happen is your carbohydrates typically grow up, go up because people generally don't eat more protein. Exactly. So they eat more carbohydrate, which people don't understand that that just pretty, your body burns that so quickly and basically just turns it to sugar. If they're not, if you're not totally, eating, it, it is so, sugar. And right? that's a problem with low fat foods because they're dull tasting. They've got no flavor they put in all these junk sweeteners, maltodextrin. They've got all these weird names. They can still say no sugar, but believe me, they are sugar. Maltode maltodextrin spikes your glycemic index fat farther than real sugar. So that's what they're putting in there to make it taste at least halfway good. It's still not filling or healthy. Right. So low fat, really be careful. It's mostly junk and it's yeah. high price junk. <laughs> Yeah, no, it really is. It really is. And that's so what it me. They don't put a warning on there about the PUFAs, which are more dangerous. Well, that's so, what I want to get to next. So you mentioned okay. that. Now explain, what does that stand for? Because people are like, what is she saying? Yeah. <laughs> Poof, what? It, it sounds kind of like, you know, a princess or something, but it's not. It's polyunsaturated fatty acid. And P-U-F-A is what it stands for. Yeah, what yeah. happens is... If you look at a chemical diagram, and I have the picture, I'll mail it to anybody who wants it, but a saturated fat is really even, it's like perfect. It looks so, you know, like, okay, that's normal. Then you go to the monounsaturated, which is olive oil, avocado oil. Usually those are one double bond. So the oxidation can get in, but only one place. But then you go to polyunsaturated, they got a double bond every link. And so it's just right for being unstable, oxidization, which turns to inflammation. I mean, they're bad from the start. And part of that is they are over-processed to even get them. They're baked in like thousand degree ovens so that oil drips out of the seeds and then they're processed even further, like they add some chemicals for a color and to even out, so they're not like looking different colors at different places because they put them in a clear box. So they're even further exposed to light and heat all their life. So they're probably rancid before you open them up just from sitting on the shelf. And that it's a big problem because they're so unstable, they oxidize real quickly. And especially when you go cook with those, Right away, that heat, there they go. They're like awful. Like McDonald's used tallow until 1990, beef tallow to fly, fry their fries. Wow, I didn't know, that's actually shocking to me. I cannot even believe that, wow. <laughs> they did, and see, that's what made them famous. Everybody loved those fries. And then with all the um, bad press on saturated fat, they flipped to corn oil, safflower oil, canola, whichever, it depends on which McDonald's you're going to, but, they, but they, now they use that. So now when they have to clean their uniforms, sometimes they catch fire in the dryer because they're, that step, it's like a little film. Even when they clean every day, it still gets a film on all of the fryers, the walls, everywhere. It's just grotesque stuff. So I can tell you that I, I absolutely believe this because I I probably haven't eaten McDonald's since the 1990s, but 
prior to that, and my parents weren't ones to bring us to, you know, to bring me to fast food a lot, but we would have it like all the kids wanted it back then, you oh, know, yeah. growing up in the seventies or whatever. So it was kind of like a treat once in a while. And I distinctly remember that there was a time I couldn't put my finger on what year it was or whatever, but yeah. now this may, totally makes sense. When yeah. all of a sudden it wasn't, it, it wasn't so much that they tasted differently to me, but they left a film yeah. on the roof of my mouth. And I was like, what is going on with those French fries? It's disgusting. Like, there's seen... something wrong with them now. You were a doctor even then. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I mean, I still, I still to this day remember it. I'm like, something changed with those French fries. And I bet you people who are listening to this can, can, can think back and remember like, oh yeah, they, that, they never used to be like that. No, it wasn't. And it, it changed like um, all the industry. Like I went to cooking classes in Chicago because they had like the celebrity restaurants. We had a spa go right out my back door. And that was where I went. You, you paid, but then you cooked with their chef who I forget his name, but he was like famous from LA. And um, then you ate, but they dipped everything in this junk oil. Because it's cheap, even though they're paying, you're paying 50 bucks a plate, easy. They dipped it in there. And then like they, they may say it was cooked in something else, but it never is. Because I asked once in a really high priced restaurant, they had tallow fries. And I said, are those really? And he goes, my waiter, he knew me and he was nice. And he said, no, we fry them in canola. And then we drizzle over when they come. So you got to ask. You well, have to ask. And you can't make a fit because it, it's, it won't do you any good because right. pennies to them is hundreds of dollars a day, you know, and the difference in price. And like we're talking about tallows tripled, you know, and that's one of the reasons people are finally getting wise a little yeah. bit. But it's amazing how, what restaurants, you know, you have to be really careful when you go out to eat because even Ooh. a restaurant that claims it's farm to table or organic or whatever like 98% of them are probably still using canola oil. Well, okay, there's an app. It's called Seed Oil Scout. It's, you can put the I'm app I'm glad on you mentioned phone. that, yep. I am shocked, Chipotle. Um, oh yeah. What's the other one? Um, uh, another healthy one. But, but anyway. even restaurants that aren't chains or franchises, you know, oh, like yeah. even your local independent restaurant that's claiming it's farm to table. Oh yeah. They might still be cooking with, you know, well, seed Foods. oils or canola. Whole Foods, I'll walk through their uh, prepared oh. foods. They cook them in canola. I mean, it, so yeah. I'm okay. And then also, if you look at any of the protein bars or the uh, notorious shakes, <laughs> it's yep. all got seed oil. I'm going, really? You know, so I think everybody is forced to to compete on price and you know plus they've got the endorsement of the American Heart Association because of that lower cholesterol and that's that's not a good thing now it's not the best so people might know might not know what a PUFA is like we're saying canola oil like what else should people be staying away from um corn let's see here I need my list there's there's so many corn canola soybean, sunflower, and that's a biggie because, you know, um, we have a mutual acquaintance whose husband just had a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. So they use sunflower oil to bring down their immunes before a transplant and then after so it'll, the body will accept it. That's how immunosuppressive these suckers are. Wow. And sunflowers everywhere. I've had that come in protein powder in my vitamins. Some of them will say sunflower lecithin or whatever. Lecithin, yep. So uh, rice bran oil, um, uh, ra grape seed, um, cotton seed, um, and then also nuts. Peanuts are notoriously high. So I used to go to a Chinese restaurant all the time that used peanut oil and it was delicious. I mean, I can't believe how much food I ate from them, but it's high, it's like 50%. So, and then even chicken and um, pigs because they only have one stomach. A cow has more than one. So they can turn the seeds they eat, the seeds and the other linoleic acid high diet stuff into saturated fat because it goes through multiple 
processes. But chickens and pigs only have one stomach. So they're 25% linoleic acid. Just yeah, so you have to be them. very careful where you get your chicken and pork from. True. Like a local farm, you can ask Pasture, them. yeah. And it's hard to find pasture pork. Yeah. We don't have wild boars in Naples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe only in Arizona. <laughs> or, 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 or Blue Martini, they probably have wild boars. <laughs> oh, that's true. That is funny. <laughs> Except they yeah. close, I guess, or they're not near as popular or something. I haven't heard about it for a few years. So when someone comes to work with you, what could they expect? So like, what's it, you know, what's it like to work with you as a coach? Well, like we said, metabolic therapy, because that is the most important thing. We're learning. It's a factor in everything. Like every cancer patient they tested had metabolic problems. And right there, tells you all you need to know. And heart disease, that's from it. And um, the artery issues are a big deal too now because people like you probably heard of that CAC scan mm -hmm. a lot of that comes from the calcium that gets in your veins and that doesn't go through so you're not getting enough vitamin k plus the rest of your diet sucks or else that wouldn't happen so the whole you just need to monitor the whole thing because why have a stroke or a heart attack or cancer without trying and even Alzheimer's is from diet mostly and healthy fat really helps brain diseases and mental health. So, so you, you really teach people about all of this. There's a lot of education when they're working with you so they can obviously know what to buy and yeah, we're trying to and just like we were talking, it's not like um, cut and dry that you'll, you'll die tomorrow because that's not how it happens. Like the, we were talking how the PUFAs, they corrupt your body enough that they stay in there for two to three years. They don't come out until two to three. So say you've got 20 years of eating that, you've got a bunch in there that's all clogging up everything. And um, even sunburn that it go, it'll stay in your skin and that that's what causes sunburn is because your whole body is reacting to that oxidation and then inflammation and that storage of all that junk like this is the number one thing to make your mitochondria dysfunctional which you want your mitochondria at full bore because that's producing most of your energy and most of your cell death which you want because you want to make new cells so that affects your dna it's just right down the line so start at the bottom where you can and keep that healthy and at least like if you're going to eat any poofas but balance it out with saturated fat as well because that helps like that's yep that's good to know yeah you can kind of cleanse that, that mitochondria, if it gets some good saturated fat, oh, I got something to work with here. Okay, energy, you know? So I think the whole thing is kind of like, just be aware and then just don't do it every day. If you're gonna do something high linoleic acid, then just modify it, so. Right, and one thing to keep in mind also, like people, like I'm just thinking, oh, people might be thinking, oh, beef, great. So I can go out and I can have a burger. Well, where, what are they cooking it in? Exactly. Right? I'm like, yeah. So you have to be and careful. Dipping also. it in first, even before they. <laughs> yep. It's getting a double layer. Yep. But yeah. And that, you know, the more that I do this, the more I love ordinary. I love cooking at home. And because I just think we're, we're seeing, I mean, no, don't get paranoid, but it's still, we're seeing that they can't help it. That's competition. They have to do that. It's, it, they're not trying. To hurt you because they're probably eating it too but just be aware and then like i'll say you know please i'm allergic could you fix it in butter you know and and i think most of the time they'll, they'll try yeah i agree too just ask i mean that's, yeah. that's all you can do be you know, Don't it's, be... it, it's unrealistic to think that we're never going to go out to restaurants again so it's, yeah we can try 
we can do the best we can as far as trying to find a restaurant that is more healthier, that is doing thing, you know, is cooking with more healthier fats and things like that. But at the end of the day, you can always ask. And yes, you can just say you have an allergy. Like I, I have a friend actually who literally the only thing she, I told her, I'm like, this is the best thing that could have happened to you. And she wants to kill me every time I say that to her, but <laughs> she gets this horrible reaction to any kind of seed oils like that. Any, oh, good for her. The only thing she can eat is butter and olive oil. And her body will tell her immediately if something was cooked in one of those oils. But in her mind, like she's, I don't want to say she's not health conscious because she is, but she's not like, you know, crazy like you and I are. <laughs> and I'm telling her like, that's perfect. Your body's telling you don't yeah. eat this. And she's like, you don't understand. I travel for business. It's a nightmare. So, but she asks everywhere she goes and she just says, you know, I'm allergic. I, the only thing, can, can you cook it in butter for me, please? Because that's what yeah, I'm butter. Butter can have. Because 60 to 90% of olive oil is adulterated. Yep. I didn't know that because I didn't know what they did. I knew it was corrupt industry, but they add corn oil, sapphire to stretch it out, make it more of a bigger bottle. And then same with avocado oil. It's like 82% adulterated. And so I, I just think butter, ghee, if they don't have butter, it's great. Or, you know, then go down to, okay, you got coconut oil, maybe go there. If they don't have, and if they do have tallow, you, but they probably wouldn't use it only because it, it's so expensive now. I, I can't imagine any restaurant. It's costing more than the meat they're putting in there. <laughs> probably so. Totally. <laughs> but you can render it yourself too. Right. That's I and, you know, if, so if cost is a factor, because I think it'll come back down because this just happened after the quarantine. And I'm not sure if it was the traveling of it, that it has to go a long ways to get to the process. Or I don't know but whatever. Oh, we could go down a million rabbit holes about why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. And then so good. before we finish anything else that you want listeners to know about what you do or any other good tidbits like that. Well, one thing to remember is diet is 85% of your weight. So if you want to lose weight, don't spend your life in the gym. And even when you do start, you don't have to kill yourself. You know, I, I say a good walk in the sun, perfect. I totally agree. And that spirit has, that has been hard for me to say as yeah. an exercise physiologist, <laughs> because, you know, like my whole degree is on exercise and, you know, how it affects the metabolism and everything else. But I completely a hundred percent agree with you. Exercise is more, should be more used as a maintenance tool totally. um, because to help boost your metabolism, yeah. to keep Right, yeah. exactly. And diet is 80 to 90% easily. Easy, yeah. And so if they can get that, get over that hurdle, they're home free. Plus, they'll feel better, they'll look better, they'll think better. The whole thing goes right in line. Now, but I do agree that we need some flexibility. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable and you're going to have pain. But the, a good diet does heal a lot of inflammation, like in your knees, back, hips. A lot of times that'll go away with a yep. good diet. I've seen, I've absolutely seen that with people oh. for sure. Yeah. And no one can believe it either. They're like, how is it possible that that's related to, <laughs> but you have to understand yeah. how the body works. And well, yeah, the, the mechanism is that cardiolipin in the center of every mitochondria it's recognizing that fat. And if it's the wrong fat, it's going to say, whoa, and it's going to oxidize and inflame right there. You're yep. done. You're dead yep. because that's going right in your blood. And so just imagine that when you're in the pain and think about, oh, okay, well, maybe I won't eat that cake at least today. Exactly. So, and it, one day, one, one meal at a time. And then right. after, like make it a series of little tests. Well, gee, how did I feel after that? And and write it down. And then you can look back and say, oh, you know, maybe this does work because that's the only way to find out what really works for your body anyway. And like your friend who get, is allergic to seed oils, lucky her, except it must be awful because everything, they're everywhere. I know. Yeah, it is hard. It is hard. So but I say that in a little bit of jest because when when it comes to practical ac application it you know it's difficult for sure oh 
totally. And, and it is even for my clients because nobody is used to being that paranoid and no. reading these teeny tiny little labels. And but you have to these days. You do because they're going to bury it too. And a lot of times at a certain amount, like they did make trans fats totally illegal, but they still sneak them in there. If they're under like 0.5% or something, they can still put it in there. So yep. just, just imagine that's probably in there too, if it's anything processed. Yeah. So just keep it in mind, not to be paranoid, but just to be like aware. Right, exactly. So this has been awesome. How can people learn more about you or get in contact with you? Well, like Diane introduced me so well, I'm Lee Hartman, but my website is lee for lifehealth.com but i also have uh lee hartman 14 at gmail for my um for my email and you can go there to if you want my website will take you there that's lee for life health it'll take you to my email if you like okay and then i'm on facebook insta like everywhere linkedin Twitter. I'm loving Twitter. There's some very smart people on there. Like a lot of people are talking about the poofus now. This real smart guy named Tucker Goodrich. I think he's a doctor, but he retired now. He does finance stuff too. So, but he's, he's really cool. He's right on it. Awesome. Well, I know. So it's, it's it's, coming out out there. (laughs) Yeah. More and more. That's what we want. We want transparency. Right. Exactly. Oh yeah. Exactly. Well, awesome. I hope people reach out, reach out to you. Lee for life health.com is your website and uh, or at essential Naples. Yes. People can, <laughs> can read all about you in essential Naples uh, in our spring issue, which is out right now. And you have, you have a great article there and people can find you through essential Naples.com as well. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lee. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. And thanks good everybody. Issue. for. Yes. (laughs) Thanks everybody for listening and we will see you back here next time.